Oh, now I want to watch this on seahorses. Send it to me later. If you have your Bibles, go over and turn over to Psalm 119. I made a decision today that I really don't normally make, one that I hate to make. While I was in the city and kind of over there by Moore, I decided that I would go shopping for myself. Very much dislike shopping, so I I went into men's warehouse, and of course, you go into those places, and they immediately want to upsell you, and they want to take you to the stuff that's $300, $400, and I was, I was like, stop, where's the clearance rack? Take me over there, and so that's where we went, and as I'm looking at all the suit jackets there, and I'm looking at them all, and it turns out most of them are a lot smaller than the size I need. But there was one there, and it was like 30 bucks. So I'm like, it's a bargain. I really want it. And I started to put it on, and I got it to about here. And I was kind of stuck. And so I decided I would just take out my pocket knife and cut it down the back so it would fit me. I didn't do that. I talked about Sunday how we have to have a standard in life, and we have God's Word as a standard. Um, units of measurement are a standard, even in clothing. And of course, there's uh, the whole analogy where God's Word is like a suit jacket. If I really wanted to fit in that jacket, now, this, all analogies break down at some point, but if I really wanted to fit in that jacket, what would I need to do? I, I would need to start losing some weight. Now, at some point, I don't know how much smaller I can get my shoulders, um, but you get the point. If I really wanted in that jacket, what needed to change was me, not the jacket. Sometimes we tell people about standards, the standard of the Scripture, of the Bible, and say God has a will for us, and He wants us to live according to this will. And, and a lot of people hear that, and they just react violently against the idea of anyone telling me what to do, even if that someone is God and only wants what's best for me. We're not going to have time to read the entirety of Psalm 119. I hope that you will, though, at some point, maybe tonight before you go to bed, go read Psalm 119, because what we see here is the psalmist, which is traditionally uh, attributed to David. He's going to write, and, and his attitude here is not someone who looks at God's Word and says, I can't believe God wants me to do this. How, how dare God tell me what to do? In fact, when you look at Psalm 119, over 10 times, I think it's somewhere near 11 times in this chapter, are the words, teach me. He's asking God, teach me about his words. I want to look just at a couple of these. Actually, you know what? I want to read 57 through 64, and then I'll wrap this up. The Lord is my portion. I promise to keep your words. I entreat your favor with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. When I think on my ways, I turn my feet to your testimonies. I hasten and do not delay to keep your commandments. Though the cords of the wicked ensnare me, I do not forget your law. At midnight, I rise to praise you because of your righteous rules. I am a companion of all who fear you, of all those who keep your precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of your steadfast love. Teach me your statutes. As a teacher, you can ask for no better student than one who is excited to learn, who shows up for class and says, teach me. That never happens, though but how great would it be if it did? Church, we need to be a people that is excited about learning about God's Word, is excited about knowing who God is through His Word, is excited about learning more about Him and His ways through His Word, so much so that we're just constantly coming to Him and go, teach me. I want to learn. I want to be changed. I want to be more like you. I don't want to cut that suit jacket so that it'll fit me. I want to cut myself so that I will fit within the standard of God's Word. I want you to notice, if you read 119 tonight, I want you to notice how many times he says, teach me, teach me, teach me. And then at the end of the chapter, it says, teach me one more time.
169, it says, let, me cr let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my plea come before you. Deliver me according to your word. My lips will pour forth praise, for you teach me your statutes. Throughout this whole chapter, he's saying, teach me, teach me, teach me. And then he says, I'm going to praise you because you have taught me. You do teach me. I'm excited to learn about you and through your word, more about you. Perhaps you're here tonight and you want to know more about God. If you have that need or any other need, we ask you to come now as we stand and sing. Celebrate.